You'll see a lot of those symbols around. Here is the cancer symbol again. The yin yang. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you spell that word, it's an anagram for the word males. M A L E S, males. <coughs> you couldn't have astrology without four cardinal points or four stars in the sky through which it becomes all possible. So you'll see a lot of corporate logos using this forester or four star motif. Whenever you see the word forester or these motifs, realize they're talking about astrology and the four cardinal points, the equinoxes and the solstices. You'll find uh, the Mars, the symbol of the planet Mars. Anyone in Aries knows their symbol is Mars. You'll find it on Volvo. Volvo is the Scandinavian take on the Scandinavian word for vulva, which is the female opening. And Mars is the phallic symbol of the, of the arrow. Kron, K-R-O-N, it's a Bay Area television company, comes from Kronos, which means time. Arista, a word that doesn't mean anything in English, actually relates to uh, the constellation of Virgo. The most bright star in the sky is called Spica, but Spica used to be called Arista, so Arista Records that relates to Virgo, the sign of Virgo. One of the most important motifs in astrology is again the spring equinox, the rising of the sun at the vernal equinox of the spring every year. You're going to find so many logos that deal with that. The sign of Aries is the sign in which the sun, you know, rises on the spring equinox. That's in the sign of Aries. So you're going to find the motif of the sun rays or the Mazda symbol is the horns of Aries, the horns of the ram. Here is the sun. The Nissan symbol is red, a red sun crossing a border or a barrier half above, half below, right? A horizon line. And by the way, you know what the word Nissan means? It means the first month of the year. In Hebrew, Nissan means our first month of the year in their language. So this is the sun rising above the horizon. Morning stars, pretty obvious. Your most famous corporation franchise in America is nothing but the horns of Aries if you look at it. And that's why it's on a red background. The rising of the sun in the morning on the eastern horizon is exactly those colors, is it not? Right? Blazing yellow on the red sunlit background. That is an astrological motif relating to Aries. And if you know what Aries symbolizes, it represents power and aggression and dominance and will to power and libido and aggression and energy. Very powerful to use Aryan symbols in the corporate logos because it works. Here is the Hyatt Hotel. The word Hyatt is Persian, an Arabic word actually meaning serpent. And here you see what is called the gleam. You'll see the, what they call the gleam in advertising. It's a commonly used symbol. There's the pyramid. The raised two fingers is an ancient motif of the 33rd degree because when you raise two fingers, the segments are three degree three. One, two, three, one, two, three, the 33rd degree. And the Dodge Ram is clearly connected to Aries because there's the ram's head. And if you turn the word ram backwards, it's Mars, which is the ruler of the sign of Aries. We get the word arise from Aries, because that's what the sun is doing in the sign of Aries. He's rising yeah, over the horizon. So we say arise, good night. You know, the sun is arise and shine. Aries. The sun is one of the most pervasive of all symbols in this particular thesis. You'll see the symbol of the sun all over the place. You know what Mazda means? Mazda is not Hebrew. Mazda is Persian for the first month of the year. Nisan in Hebrew means April, the, the, um, March and April. Well, Mazda means exactly the same thing. It is the first month of the year when the sun rises on the spring equinox. And you'll see constant motifs of this the sun rising, corporate logos that represent the sun. Jordan Maxwell was saying yesterday that the very word on means light. And you'll always see this word highlighted, just like it is here. So many logos use the word on or on, highly lit in some way or defined, and the symbol of the sun and the pyramid.
Astrological symbols often appear in places you wouldn't find it. When the sun rises on the horizon and you see the lovers, that is from the sign of Gemini. That, by the way, even though it's hard to believe, is actually an astrological image that you're looking at, relating to the twins, to the sign of Gemini. It's very, very innocuous, but it's all over the place, this kind of imagery. Here is what's called the sun window, window or the solar window, with the ladder of Jacob going up. Solar windows are very, very important, as is the phallic symbol. How many of your talk shows from Upper Winfrey onwards have used those sun windows? America's favorite videos. If you watch, look at the design, the set designs, the stage designs of a lot of the sitcoms and a lot of the talk shows. You'll find that they use the solar window motif an awful lot to represent the sun cult. Pyramids. The background of the night sky. That represents a house of the zodiac. That's what a window represents, the solar window. Not only is the sun important, but the word light is important in many contexts. Light is important philosophically. Light is also important subliminally. If it is light beer, then shouldn't it be L-I-T-E? But look at the choice of the very spelling. If you're drinking that, the implication is subliminally that you're drinking light. That's why it becomes addictive, because your unconscious mind would love to drink light. That's what we're all about, remember? Spiritual uplift. Well, they're going to hand it to you in this. That which takes you down, but it has on it, drink it, it's full of light. And watch the symbolism in the advertisements when the, the models are drinking. You'll see images of light and halos and all sorts of things to spiritualize things. Mountains are connected with spiritual ascent. So is light. But look who's using it and for what purpose. The human wreckage and debris of these poisons that have been uh, put into our, our life. Yes. Corona. Cronus, and many, many other symbols relating to, red, to Aries. Sears is an anagram for the word Aries. In the sure advertisements, the sun will, uh, in the advertisements, in the graphics, you'll see a beam of light come across. It'll move across the word. It'll suddenly glow on the R and move aside, right? If you ever watch their logos, they're interesting. Red Ken means the red king, which relates to the sign of Aries. Anybody in here Capricorn? One obvious uh, thing that I really have studied a long time is what they call positioning. It's another aspect of this. In our societies, they actually design the franchises to look like churches. Some of them, if you go into Taco Bell, if you go into Kentucky Fried, they have the turret. Kentucky Fried even has the little turret that we associate with religion. What burgers, french fries, and cokes have to do with spirituality, I don't know, but they think it does. Because, you see, they've taken us down into the appetite body. So, some of these banks even are designed that way. When you walk into some of these places, notice that they even have a portico. Some of them even have stained glass windows on the franchises. Next time you go, just take a look at some of these places, the Ben Franks, the Ringer Huts, and look at their design. That some of them are like Shinto temples, others are like Western temples. The seven up, we just talked about what the seven up are. What are the seven up? Are the seven lights in the sky? They're up there, seven up. Or the chakras. Play on words. Union 76 is, of course, Union 1776, when America was founded. But in 1776, May, uh, sorry, July 4th is in the sign of cancer. So America is born under the sign of cancer. That big golden ball that you see floating above uh, the um, stations, what is, it? what is the big ball that rotates in the sky that's all orange and gold? This is the sun, right? So they're already telling you there that this is the sun in Cancer, in Union 76. But masonry, people into masonry are very smart. They use a lot of codes and cryptic analogs. If you take the number 76 and put it on a clock face and know what you're doing, you'll find something interesting. 7 o'clock is actually 660, is it not? Right? Just think about it for a moment. Follow me. 659, 660. Plus the 6, and you have 666. I'm not stretching it. This is the way they work. Words that don't mean anything in English. The word Pepe or Pepsa or Pepsi is a very, very old word. You've heard of uh, the devil. You've heard of Satan, right? 
Well, the oldest cultures in the world is the Egyptian. And if you go back about 25,000 years, the word that they have for the adversary, the word that they use for Satan is Pepsi.